presentation of Fox Sports. We are Black Mark. We are Detroit. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. It's a great night to take the four train to the Bronx and Yankee Stadium where you know who is waiting Aaron Judge and the rest of the Yankees great night for baseball here tonight. Welcome to the ballpark game two featuring the Tigers and the New York Yankees. Hi again everyone and welcome to Tigers baseball Mario and Pemba Ron Allen glad to have you with us here for game two in the series Tigers dropped the opener last night Rod, and I guess we got a bird's eye view last night how good this Yankees team is another tough to ask tonight. Well Tigers are going to have to come out and match their intensity they're going up against CC Sabathia he's been pretty good left hander although he's kind of changed how he pitches but two months to go in the season all the trade talk behind the Tigers now it's time for them to come out and play some really good baseball we got a lot of guys that are playing for jobs next year so they want to make it tough on Al Avila to bring Bring in new players. Yeah, I would agree with that. And one guy that is playing well right now, in fact, his best baseball of the year, a 10 game hitting streak for James McCann. Had a nice conversation with uh, James McCann today, and he said he started to make some adjustments back in Seattle. He backed off the plate, he straightened up, he also narrowed his stance a little bit, and he's also choking up on the bat right now. He says that gives him much more bat control. And he said, also, Rod, don't get it twisted. I'm playing a lot more now, so I have a chance to really zero in. I really have a chance to have some quality at bats. I know I'm going to play every single day now for the most part so I can simply relax and have some fun whereas it was tough earlier. You also remember James hit some home runs early Mario. He told me the swing got big got long. He was trying to hit home runs and he was also trying to make up for lost time because he knew Avila was getting a lot of playing time. Avila was playing some really good baseball and he said he might have got caught trying to do a little bit too much knowing how well Avila was playing and it might have been tough for him to stay in that lineup on a daily basis. And don't forget he's got that cool new face player too. <laughs> yeah, that does. really has made a difference. That's Peach well. on his chin. <laughs> Stick around. Game two in the series coming up after a short break. We'll send you back to the Call Sam Studios. For Mickey York is standing by. Coming up tonight, here's what's going on. Evolving with age. A couple of pitchers that have kind of reinvented themselves. CC Zabathia, Honeyball Sanchez. Game two from the Bronx. Next.
Baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank, a part of Detroit and the community since 1849. Dodge, join the brotherhood of muscle at the Dodge Summer Clearance event going on now. And by Kroger, fresh food, low prices at Kroger. Back here in New York as we get you ready for baseball here this evening. Gorgeous night in the Bronx. The Tigers and Yanks will go at it here in game two of the series at Yankee Stadium. The Tigers starting lineup tonight looking a little bit different for Brad Ausmus as they prepare to take on the Yankees here. Tigers starting lineup presented this evening by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. And for the Tigers tonight, he'll be Kinsler leading it off. Mikey Matuk will bat second. Jay up is third. Followed by Cabrera cleaning up Castellanos and then McCann, Hicks, Machado, and Romine. Machado playing short tonight for Iglesias and No Vmart as well. And that is the starting lineup that will take on CC Sabathia tonight, presented by Jeff Glover and Associates Realtors. And when CC came to the big leagues back in 2001, he threw 97 miles an hour. Now his top fastball, about 89 miles an hour, but having a lot of success. He also throws a lot of sliders, lots of changeups, lots of curveballs, lots of off speed pitches these days from CC Sabathia. Let's take a look at the Yankees starting defense. It is brought to you by Tim Hortons. And Frazier, Gardner, Judge in the outfield. Frazier, that would be Todd Frazier at third base. Also, Gregorius back in there tonight, their shortstop. Wade in the infield as well with Headley. And Sanchez is the starting catcher. And here we go. It'll be Kinsler, Matuk, and Upton. Game two in the series. The Yanks won last night, seven to three. CC Sabathia ready to go to work. The 37-year-old out of Alejo, California. Kinsler in the ball game last night, one out of five. He has hit safely now in his last three. 2.43 batting average. And tonight's first pitch is rolled slowly to first base. Headley gobbles it up and just like that, one gone. Three unassisted on the ground out. And that'll bring up Mikey Matuk. There have been several guys in this Tigers lineup that have really stepped up. And Matuk certainly being one of those. Alex Presley was on the DL, was having a fabulous year, and of course. We've talked about James McCann and how he has really picked up his game. And Mikey Montuk was a first round draft choice of the Tampa Bay Rays when he came out of college LSU. So we're finally Mario getting a chance to see some of those tools that Tampa saw when they made him their first round draft choice the season he came out of college. And sometimes all it takes is an opportunity to play every day and Montuk has taken advantage. And really the first time Mikey's had an opportunity to play on a daily basis. Mikey on base four times in the ball game last night picked up an RBI was hit twice including once in the helmet. He wasn't happy about it either. No he uh, voiced his displeasure and quickly uh, popped up and went to first. And Sabathia missing high. Two balls and one strike. Once upon a time, CC Sabathia would challenge you with 95 and above fastballs, a real good hard slider, and a really good changeup. Top fastball now, probably 91. Matuk ropes it to third, a one-handed -hand, one pick by Frazier, and that is a dandy of a play by Todd Frazier. Again, Matuk hitting the ball hard. Two gone. Frazier, pretty good third baseman. They just acquired him from the Chicago White Sox. Picked it clean and flipped it across the diamond to Headley for the out. Look at the concentration. He watched it all the way in the glove. Oh, actually, he did close his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, he watched it for about 50% of the time. <laughs> then luck took over. Yeah, oh, good. <laughs> oh, well, he knew where it was going. <laughs> Here's Upton now with two outs. And Jay up looks at ball one. Jay up hasn't had a whole lot of success in his career against CC. Small sample size, though 0 for 5. But he's had a really nice year against left-handed pitching, batting 355. Sabathia's 1-0 missing outside, 2-0 now on Upton. And something else that else that Jay up has done very well lately. He's really been driving the ball into the right center field gap. Therefore, Gardner, the center fielder, not necessarily playing him in the gap, but kind of playing him straight up. The 2-0 pitch. Remember last year, early in the season, when it seemed like 
every up in at bat he was behind in the count 0 and 2. I do. And in this year it seems like every at bat he's up 2 and 0. Yeah and now Mickey's going through that 0 2 stuff right yeah. now. Yeah. It's amazing how that stuff. That's how it happens. Two balls one strike. Swing and a miss good pitch. 2 2 now on Justin Upton. CC will only throw his fastball about 25% of the time. And that's just a really good changeup, very down and in to Justin Upton. 280 this year. Last year at this time, 239. And he just missed. A little bit low, 3 and 2. Cabrera waiting on deck. We're just underway here at Yankee Stadium in a scoreless game. Here's the 3 2. Little chopper foul. Up that has always hit well against the Yanks. 308 career against New York. Finishing up a marvelous month of July. Hard to believe August is already here. Two months left in the regular season. 308 career against the Yanks. Driven in the air to right field. Judge going back, still going to the track in front of the wall to make the catch. Tigers go one, two, three in the first. Go to the bottom of the first and plenty of Tiger fans here in the ballpark tonight. Good to see. That's a pretty cool sign right there, buddy. Great sign. Good to penmanship. Hey, Anibal Sanchez tonight presented by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Anibal Sanchez pitching in his 19th game this year comes in with a 2 and 1 record and elevated earned run average. He'll need to be at his best here today against the Yankees team. This is a good offense and they play some really good baseball in this particular ballpark. Yankees starting lineup tonight presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers and for the Yanks it'll be Brett Gardner back in there tonight leading off followed by Clint Frazier and Aaron Judge Sanchez Gregorius and Holiday in the middle Chase Headley Todd Frazier and Wade rounding it out for the Yankees. So here is Gardner who did not play last night got the evening off. And Gardner already with 19 home runs on August 1st, which is a new career high for him. He'll look at ball one from Sanchez. So he's got some pop in that leadoff spot. The Yankees are 16 and 0 when Gardner homers. Mm. We'll try to keep him in the ballpark tonight. Here's the 1 0 pitch. That's in there for a strike 1 1. Well, that's quite a difference, huh? August 1st last year, just seven homers and 26 driven in. He did win a gold glove last year. Shoots this one on the ground of the second baseman right there is Kinsler, and one gone. 
And while we have a moment, I will set the Tigers defensive alignment for you. A little different look here tonight. Upton and left. Montuk is in center field. Romine getting some starts these days in right against left-handers. Castellanos, Machado, Kinsler, Hicks in the infield. Miguel Cabrera, he's the DH here tonight. And James McCann has been on fire lately with that bat. He's the catcher. Here is Clint Frazier, the left fielder for the Yankees. RBI triple in the ball game last night on a uh, ball that was scalded to left center field that barely got over the shortstop's glove. Unbelievable. Really, it was. Scooted all the way to the wall. I was asking Joe Girardi, I said, uh, is this grass fast on the outfield? He says, no, it's normal. Huh. He said, this kid just hits the ball extremely hard. Well, you brought this up last night, but when Hicks comes back, they'll have a tough decision. Oh, it's going to be very difficult. Frazier, top prospect in baseball the last couple of years. Looks at the ball low and away, and now he has gone up 3 0. Sanchez had a uh, so so outing his last time out, pitched into the fourth and gave up four runs, but by and large, he's been keeping his team in the game. There's a strike call. You know the story by now on Anibal he went down to the minor leagues to triple A Toledo try and turn himself around after a not so good stretch in the bullpen for the Tigers. That's popped up first base side Hicks will watch it sail. Three and two now on Frazier. First four starts for Anibal this year after coming back from the minor leagues. He did a very nice job. 309 or in run average. The opponents were only hitting a bucket, some change against him. But his last three, he's given up some, some damage. Another bouncing ball to second. Kinsler has another try, and down goes Frazier for round number two. Frazier, very impressive in last night's game. He homered in the second at bat. It was a change up on a 2 0 pitch. His first time up, Fulmer struck him out with a 99 mile power fastball. And the second time up, a change up. Talking to Marcus Timms, who's one of the hitting coaches here before the game, Mar, he said last year, Judge would see that breaking ball upstairs and he would simply lay off of it because he didn't want to hit it. But this year, he says he's picking on and taking those hanging breaking balls and hitting them a long way. Well, he's got massive power and he's got 34 home runs right now. 75 RBIs. Batting with two outs here and nobody on. It'll miss low. One ball and one strike on Aaron Judge. Joe DiMaggio is. Uh, the previous high for rookies and home runs for the Yanks. Ground ball to third foul. Yeah, Judge tied him at the All Star break. It's amazing. And he has got two full years to go. The 32nd overall pick in his draft. Now the 1 2. High pop up. First base side, Kinsler and Hicks. It'll be Ian. And one, two, three, go the Yankees. We'll head to the second in the Bronx.
in Yankee Stadium. And uh, stay tuned to Tigers Live. Following the game, we'll select the Fox Sports Detroit Tigers player of the game presented by McDonald's. Stop by for your breakfast favorites now being served all day. You never know who you're going to run into here at the ballpark. Paul George. Taking in a Yankees game. He's got his Yankees lid. Yeah, he does. Yankee jersey. Sabathia goes back to work and tries to curl in a breaking ball to Cabrera. And CC's body language after that pitch was called a ball by Mike Estabrook is one that told me he thought that was a strike. Cabrera Castellanos McCann in the Tiger second. Ball too high. Miguel one for three in the ball game last night. Estabrook behind the dish and the rest of the crew Bellino Lane and Hudson. Jerry Lane the crew chief. Miggy looks at a 2 0 strike right down the middle of the plate. And yeah, change speed. up 83. Another frustrating night for Cabrera last night. He did have a single late in the game, but he punched out, fly to center, had a walk, swing and a miss. And that's uh, a swing that we've seen more and more of from Miguel these days. Yeah, very awkward looking swing taken by Miguel. And you're right. And we've seen that quite often. Two and two. Little looper in the shallow center field, and it's going to drop. Base hit. So Cabrera will take it a leadoff single here in the second. Tigers have their first hit. And that'll bring up Castellanos. Nick had a good night last night, it was two out of three. He also walked twice in the game, so he was on a bunch last evening. Fouled off 0 and 1. Sabathia tonight making his 500th career start. He's been around a long, long time. In fact, it's only the second pitcher in history to make his 500th appearance as a starter. He's won a Cy Young, yeah, Rookie of the Year back in 2001. Now the 0 1. Castellano still leads the American League with seven triples. Trying to do something about a leadoff single here by Cabrera. Here's a 1 1. Checked it. Did he go? Did not. That's something that CC is not afraid to do. Even though the fastball tops out at about 91 miles an hour, he will pitch aggressively inside to some of the right handers, which will open up the outside corner. That's a breaking ball inside. Ground ball. It is a fair ball down the third base line. It'll bang against the wall. Cabrera is on his way to third, and Nick has himself a double. Two base hit for Castellanos, and the Tigers in business here in the second. It's a nice job here by Castellanos. He had a feeling he would probably get another change up, and even though he was a little bit out in front where he caught it, uh, still able to hit it down that third base line past Todd Frazier, and for a double, now Tigers in business. Able to keep it fair and Marvin Hudson able to dance out of the way. 20th double of the year for Nick. And here comes one of the Tigers hottest hitters right now. That would be McCann sporting a 10 game streak. And what a month of July he just finished up. James sends a slow roller to the shortstop. Oh they got two runners hung up now between second and third. Castellanos is tagged out. And McCann will reach first base. Miguel thought that 
Didi Gregorius is going to throw that ball home, but they were actually conceding the run in the infield, and Miguel stopped, and Castellano shouldn't have ran anyway. Castellano should, should stay at the, where he's at right now, but Miggy should have scored. And the Yankees conceding that run. Miguel must have thought that Didi Gregorius was going to throw home on that particular play, and he was supposed to go. You could read Brad's lips. Well, the Tigers just have not been uh, many times this year very sharp on the base pass. But on that particular play, Castellanos, he cannot go to third right. base. I mean, he's already in scoring position. I mean, the ball's right in front of him. So now, first and third, one out. And a ball outside to John Hicks. Two ninety nine for Hicks with three home runs. Uh, Hicks just recalled a couple of days ago when Avila who was traded to the Chicago Cubs. Really hasn't caught that much in a Tigers uniform in his prior call ups he was pretty much uh, playing first base when he did get an opportunity. Well he's logged a lot of miles between Detroit and Toledo to be sure this is his fifth stint with the Tigers this year. Now Sabathia with the 1 1. Foul back 1 and 2. If you think about it, if you're only going to throw 90 miles an hour, you better try to get that fastball inside because if you make mistakes over the plate with a heater that only touches 90 91, hitters will get loose on you. So it's good that CC will challenge some of these right handers inside aggressively. Grounded foul third base side. Well it really is kind of odd watching him pitch these days. I mean we all remember the old CC in an Indians uniform when he was throwing 95 96 mm -hmm. 97. One of the things that helps guys like CC make the transition from really being a, a power pitcher into being a finesse pitcher is the fact that he already had the secondary pitches even when he was throwing harder earlier in his career. Whew, that one almost got away from Sanchez. Two balls, two strikes. CC now 37 years old. Hicks waits on a 2 2. Lifted foul back out of play. Well, no matter which way he's getting it done, and certainly it's been in a different way these days, Sabathia's had himself a nice year, and the Yankees have to be glad because I think they thought there was a time where maybe the end of his contract wasn't going to be very productive for him. Yeah, he's 9 and 3, and he's pitched 94 innings this season. His earned run average is 3.61. Larry Rothschild is the pitching coach here in New York and has been for a long time. Boy Hicks giving him a battle here fouling off pitch after pitch. Number eight is forthcoming. Sabathia about to throw his 30th of the evening. And it just missed inside and now the count fills three and two. Clearly off the plate. Again, pulled foul. Three and two on Hicks. Back in May had a nine game streak for the Tigers earlier this year was providing some really good at bats in a fill in basis. And he skies this one in the air to right field Judge is going back he's going to the track to the wall leaps can't get it it's gone. Hicks goes the other way with a three run homer and the Tigers take the lead. An opposite field home run for Hicks.
Outstanding at bat by Hicks. He saw several pitches thrown by CC. The fastball, the slider, the changeup, the curveball, finally getting something up on a 3 2 pitch and flipping it the other way. Well, that'll ease the pain of the base running gaff. Fourth of the year for Hicks. And there's a strike called on Dixon Machado. I'll tell you what, man, these guys that have come up from Toledo this year, and we've talked about all of them, they've really done a job. They're hungry, man. That's back up the middle. Gonna be a tough play with Machado running with it. Got him. Ooh, we Wade. <laughs> Holy smokes out to the grass in center field to throw out Machado. That's a big league play right there. This ball went right through CC's legs, right up the middle. But look at Wade. That jump thrown back across the diamond. That's the play that Derek Jeter made so famous here at Yankee Stadium. Of course, Derek Jeter did it on the other side of second base. I thought that was a base hit all the way. That's some arm strength right there. Tremendous play by Tyler Wade, and here is Romine now. Andrew looks at ball one. Three run shot by John Hicks. The difference right now. Tigers lead three nothing. Ball inside and low two and oh. Ten pitch at bat for Hicks. And he flipped one over that 314 sign. I think it has to be a dream of most kids Mario to uh, if you're fortunate enough to play big league baseball to hit a home run in Yankee Stadium. Well, I would agree with that 100 percent. And Hicks has done just that. Romine is out to end the inning, but the Tigers grab three on one swing of the bat by John Hicks. The field gives the Tigers an early lead, and just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one, to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game, brought to you by Miller Light. Sanchez back to the hill now with a 3 0 advantage. Gary Sanchez will lead things off for the Yankees. Hannibal got him 1 2 3 in the first couple of ground balls and a pop up. Sanchez swings and misses 0 1. D.D. Gregorius then Matt Holiday for the Yanks. Honeyball Sanchez against Gary Sanchez. Gary having a good year 16 homers 51 driven in. 
Little chopper to the third base side, charging there Castellanos. And Sanchez out of there, one gone. What's going on here? Hey, boys. <laughs> look, look, look what we got here. Let's start with you, Mario. On a game. A nice Ooh. little uh, little pineapple beverage. Boy. Wouldn't forget about you, Roderick. Dude, you brought me one, too? There you go, guys. Look out, Johnny Kane. I'm going to tell you something. Did you know that the pineapple is the international symbol of hospitality? I did not, did not know that. that. Well, this is courtesy of Legends Hospitality. How much did this set you back? Well, we won't go into that. <laughs> Once again, we're going to expense this one out. All right. Ooh, I drink too much of that. I might not yeah, make the broadcast. I, was say, I can't. I can't confirm or deny that there's alcohol in those things. Oh, but great. I'm going to circle Thank back you. in the third inning and see how far you come, and we'll let the viewers decide. You know what I mean? All right, Johnny. Way to go, buddy. All right. All Appreciate right, it, man. There's drink nothing up. in there. I'm heading out there. All right. See you, boys. Where's yours at, Johnny? Uh, I don't have time for that right now. <laughs> I got work to do, Ron. This thing will be gone by the next half inning. It's kind of tasty. Is it really? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Ain't nothing in there though. Gregorius the batter here. Two and all the count. Sanchez back to work. And a chopper to the first baseman. Oh, what a play by Hicks. Hicks doing it all today, boy. Nice little pick on the side armed left, or I should say first base side of the bag there. And uh, Hicks saving a double, maybe. We saw Todd Frazier in the first inning make a really nice play down the third baseline. Now Hicks on the other side makes a really nifty play with the glove. Starts in a really nice athletic position on the balls of his feet. The ball takes a tricky hop, and he just picks it. Two gone for Holiday. And there is strike called on Matt Holiday. Holiday has uh, some pretty good numbers against Sanchez. So he needs to be careful with Matt. Line drive, base hit the left field. Soft line drive at that, but it's a two out single in the first hit of the ball game for the Yankees. First hit of the series for Holiday. McCann wanted the ball inside. He motioned with the glove for Sanchez to get it in there, and he somewhat gets it in there, but. Holiday just so strong, able to muscle that ball in the outfield for a base hit, but that was not a poor pitch. Here is Chase Headley. Headley had a big game yesterday, three out of four, couple of RBIs. And he'd been swinging a pretty good bat. His average now is up to 274. Since moving from third base to first base on the 20th of July, Headley's hitting close to 500. Now the 0 1. Headley's the guy that had some really good years with the San Diego Padres, in fact. One year with the Padres, knocked in over 100 runs. The really only big year that he's had, right? Then join the Yankees. Eight years in San Diego for Headley. The 0-2 is low. One ball and two strikes. Yankees currently on a nine game homestand. They played well here at home. They are six and one on their current homestand and have a very good record at home, 32 and 18. They play with a lot of confidence on this field. That'll miss inside, busted him in there, but too far, two and two. They've got a pretty good baseball team. They've got a nice blend of youth. They've got some veterans. You talked about Gardner, his leadership skills. There he is talking to Aaron Judge. They say they call him the Chihuahua. That's what Joe, <laughs> Joe Girardi, he told me that today. They call Garden the Chihuahua because he's always chirping. Always he's always talking. He's always barking. He's always in the clubhouse stirring up stuff. He keeps the team loose. When you have some youngsters like Judge and Sanchez and some of the other younger players that they have, it's very important to have a veteran like uh, Gardner in his ninth season in the big leagues. Did you know he had to walk on to his college team? Yeah. The College of Charleston. He had to walk on. Ooh, look out, up and in, and it hit him, and that'll put Headley aboard. 
Two on, two out. Anibal Sanchez able to get ahead of Headley. No balls, two strikes. Headley worked the count back to two and two before that fastball clipped him. His jersey. Tigers may want to look at this to make sure that he was hit by the pitch. Gino says nope. So here's Frazier. Two RBIs to the ball game last night for Frazier. And he'll look at a strike on one. Here is the Bernstein advantage. Frazier against Sanchez in his career. The advantage has belonged to Ball. He's just one for 14 against Sanchez. Five strikeouts. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2. Aduce made a really nice play on the Todd Father last night, robbing him of a home run. He was acquired from the White Sox on the 18th of July, a couple of weeks prior to the deadline. It'll bounce low, one and two. Frazier has always been a guy that will hit a lot of home runs. He did so in Cincinnati, but the one that Aducey caught last night, Fulmer said it might be the best play I've seen in person. Scaling the wall in right field, yanking it back. Bouncing ball to second. There's Kinsler who bottles it, but stays with it and throws him out. No runs, a hit, a hit batter, and two men left. Here at Yankee Stadium, the home run by John Hicks from the bottom of the lineup has given the Tigers the lead. And now it's the top of the order coming up against CC Sabathia. It'll be Kinsler to get things started. Ian and then Matuk and Upton. Sabathia brings home a strike 0 1. Kinsler bounced out three unassisted on the first pitch of the ball game tonight. Batting 243. The 0-1. That's up and in. Fastball at 91, which is just about where it sits these days for CC. Swing and a miss. He was out in front. One and two the count. Sabathia came in seven and one with an ERA a shade over two 
in his last 10 starts, but the Tigers have got him for three already. Now the one two. CC one and that one didn't get it. Really unhappy with that call. Here's the 2 2. Slapped the first and caught on a line by Headley. We were talking about CC Sabathia and the fact that he started his major league career with the Cleveland Indians. Back in those days, he was a flamethrower in 97, 98 with unhittable off speed stuff. He won a Cy Young there. Then he was traded to Milwaukee at the trade deadline. He went 11 and 2 with them and pitched them into the playoffs before signing a long term contract with the Yankees. And he's had a lot of success here as well. He was a hard thrower when he got here, but now. Not so much. CC fastball top 91. Mario just told you that. Lots of changeups, lots of sliders, having a lot of success with the slider. So we just saw the transformation from CC from Cleveland to now here in New York. 18 year career for the big left hand. Mikey Matuk stands in, looks at a strike. We welcome in Craig Monroe, who's hanging out in the studio tonight. And Simo Treve had plenty of battles with Mr. Sabathi over the years. Yeah, I wouldn't say only 261. That sounds like pretty solid production against this guy who's been around a long, long time. You probably could use that leg kick now, Simo. Top fastball, 90, 91. Lots of off speed stuff these days from CC, but it's good to see a guy that can reinvent himself and last as long as he has in the big leagues. He single handedly pitched the Brewers into the postseason that you remember? He did, man. He went 11 and 2. Down the stretch and his last three or four starts that year including the postseason he was working on three days rest for the Milwaukee Brewers. He was a beast that season. He had seven complete games down the stretch for Milwaukee after that trade. Milwaukee got everything out of CC didn't they. They did. There's a big swing by Upton. Didn't Michael Brantley go to the. Yes. To the Cleveland Indians in the CC Sabathia yep. deal. Good call. He did indeed. Yeah. And he wasn't even the main guy in the deal. No. Two balls, two strikes. And he missed outside three and two now on Upton. Sebo with a guy that's only throwing 25% fastballs these days and the other 75% between the slider, the curve, and the change, how would you approach a guy like CC these days? Upton going deep off CC, the second home run for the Tigers in this game, and for Jay Up, his 18th of the year, 4 0 Detroit. Jay Up came in having monster numbers against left handed pitching, batting a cool 355. He had no prior success against CC, but he has CC in his book now. A breaking ball down at the bottom of the strike zone and look at Jay up go down and get it and he gets great concentration with the head down. Strike called on Cabrera. Two homers tonight for the Tigers against Sabathia. 
Upton now with 68 RBIs. He continues an outstanding season for the Tigers. One ball and one strikeout, Miguel. Cabrera had a bloop single in the first inning, or the second, I should say, his first at bat, and he eventually scored. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Fouled back one and two now on Cabrera. See, you starting to see some signs uh, from Miggy, starting to get it together. Down he goes on strike. Simo, we'll see you a little bit later on, right? Justin Upton going deep. Taking C's team to the seats and left. And this one against Sabathia Upton with a solo shot Hicks with a three run homer and the Tigers have a four to nothing lead. Sanchez going to work down the bottom of the third Tyler Wade leads it off for the Yankees. And he drives one on the ground to the right side diving try Kindler can't get it base hit maybe more let's see trying for two Matuk's throw not in time. And that is a hustle double for Tyler Wade. I was talking about this Yankees team and the blend they have with the youth and the veterans. And that's why they're playing such good baseball and they put a lot of pressure on you in this particular ballpark. Fourth double of the season for Wade. Ball smoked right past Ian Kensler. He dives for it. And once this ball gets into center field, look at Wade. Real nice turn, hustling to second base with a hustling double. You don't get that double right there unless you're running full speed out of the batter's box. Only the second hit so far for the Yankees. Man in scoring position now for the top of the lineup, Brett Gardner. And yeah, Gardner seems to always give you a quality at bat. I was talking about Brett. That'll get away. Advance the runner. Mm -hmm. Wade takes third. Wild pitch. It's a changeup. And McCann gets down there, but the glove's not down. Therefore, the ball scoops right through the five hole. And one of the things you must do, and I know James knows this, you got to get that glove down to protect the ball and from going between your legs. Gardner trying to get the run in. Ball is hit to the first baseman, Hicks. Bobbled but stayed with it, and the runner holds it third. And Gardner did something there he normally doesn't do. He averages 
seeing four pitches per at plate appearance, but that time he swung at the second pitch. We'll bring up Frazier. Wade didn't know that ball was going to be bobbled, so he held at third base. Frazier bounced out his first time up. Inside 1 0. Frazier came over last year in the Andrew Miller deal along with a pretty talented pitcher, Justice Sheffield, who is at double A now for the Yankees. So the Yanks got a pretty good haul for Andrew Miller. Swing and a miss. That was a really good deal for the New York Yankees when you think about the fact that they also traded Oraldis Chapman around the same time to the Cubs. Knowing that they were going to bid on Chapman again at the end of the year when he would become a free agent. Now the 1 1. Strike called 1 2. That ball hit the inside corner. And Frazier did not appreciate that call from Mike Estabrook. You can always watch the body language of the hitter and the pitcher when they have a beef with the home plate umpire. That one stayed up borderline. 2 2 now on Frazier. Well, you wonder if any ball will throw him that butterfly changeup right here in a 2 2 count. It's been one of the better pitches he's used to his advantage since coming back from the minors as a starter. And he's not afraid to throw that changeup to righties. There it, it was. outside. Yeah. And now he's gone full at 3 and 2. Judge on deck. Lead off double, wild pitch advanced him. Little pop up, right side. Kinsler going over, he'll haul it in, and the runner will hold. Two gone now. And Arch brings you the big money counter as Aaron Judge strolls in. He's putting up some numbers that when you look at his pace, he's on pace to hit 53 home runs. So we thought we would look at some of the best rookie seasons recently and compare them. Wow. Really the only one, if he's able to stay with his pace, the only one really comparable is pool holes from a power standpoint. Trout and Ichiro Suzuki, those guys use their legs as well. Yeah. 59 steals for Trout in that rookie campaign. That was a pretty impressive list uh, compiled there. Some outstanding baseball players. Future Hall of Famers. Yeah, no doubt. Ichiro in uh, 2001, Pujols in 2001 as well. Judge waits on the 1 0. Big hack there, one ball, one strike. I like the two seam fastball there inside. This guy is six feet seven, about 280 pounds. He's got massive brute strength. You have to crowd him with fastballs inside to try to tie him up. You cannot let this young man extend his arms because when he does, he does a lot of damage, as we watched in last night's game, hitting his 34th homer of the season. There is no special significance to wearing number 99 for Judge. He said basically coming out of spring training last year, that's the number they gave him in spring camp when he got to the big leagues. He kept that number, and there it is. There aren't too many guys that have worn it. And judging by the success that he's having, he's not going to change it anytime soon. No. The 1 2. Little chopper to second base. Nice job by Sanchez to get out of the jam. They get a man to third with nobody out and fail to score him.
As we go to the fourth inning, is Sunday, August 13th. The Tigers take on the Minnesota Twins in 110. It's Sunday Kids Day. All kids 14 and under receive a free Victor Martinez poster. For tickets, go to Tigers.com or call 866-66-TIGER for ticket information. The your V-Mark poster. Sabathia back to the hill. He's got Castellanos to lead things off. There's the ball high. Nicholas had a double, did not score back in the second. And Victor Martinez getting a rare day off against his uh, former battery mate, CC Sabathia. Victor's number is not real good against CC, just seven for 35, which is a 200 batting average. So good day for rest for Victor. McCann will follow, and then John Hicks. Iglesias hurt his wrist in the ball game last night, getting the uh, night off here this evening as well. Here's the 2 0. 2 and 1 on Nick. I guess I'm glad it was the wrist instead of the oblique. Agreed. You know, we thought maybe it was a, a pulled muscle on the side or something of that nature, but uh, it turned out to be a wrist. Got a fresh cut today, too. Yeah. A couple strikes and a haircut. Should be back in the lineup tomorrow. We'll see. Not going to put no hat on that cut. <laughs> Gregorius on the charge throws out Castellanos one away. It'll bring up McCann. Did you ever get a cut like that back in the day? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Couple yeah. Stripes. In, in like uh, I think maybe like 86, 87. Mm -hmm. Guys start wearing flat tops, and guys are wearing flat tops again. But everybody had those little parts in their hair. Some guys had two. On one side, some guys had one, so I definitely had a haircut like that. You got to bring in some photos. They're back in style now. Little miniature flat top there. Little fade on the side. Here's McCann. James in the ball game, reaching out a fielder's choice. I had a nice conversation with uh, James McCann right before he was. Uh, Getting ready to do some early work today. He talked about his stance. He talked about the fact that uh, he's backed off the plate. Simo has talked about that quite a bit. He also told me that he now chokes up and he also is not as spread out as he was before the team went to Seattle. This is when he started to make the transition into this new stance right here. Well, it continues to work. There's a base hit to left for McCann. It's going to roll by Frazier momentarily, but it'll be a one out single. James also said that even though he was working on a new stance, he wasn't getting a chance to play every single day, so he really couldn't bring it into fruition, so to speak. But now he's getting a chance to play. He's getting more comfortable and having a lot of fun swinging that bat. So McCann now an 11 game hitting streak. How much do you think the fact that Avila, I mean, all seriousness, got off to such a great start that when James would get a chance to play, he would try to do too much. He would press, knowing how well Avila was doing. If he didn't do well, he knew Avila would be right back into the next day. That's a common dynamic, I think, in baseball. You know, James got off to a really great start in the month of April. He hit five home runs that first month, and he was, of course, labeled the lead catcher, but then Avila kind of wrestled that job from him. and. Yeah, I think so. I mean, your teammates, but you're still kind of battling for playing time. Right. And he probably put that pressure on himself. But that's gone now. With the Avila in Chicago, it's going to be, uh, I would think, a clear mind for James the rest of the way. Even before Avila left, James was starting to get a few more reps because Alex mm -hmm. had slowed down a little bit himself. We knew Alex would keep up with that same pace he was on, but it was nice of Alex to get off to that nice start because. The Tigers were able to parlay that into a trade and bring over a couple of really nice young players. The 1 1. Outside to Hicks, two balls and one strike. McCann also said that he's choking up all the time now. He says that gives him a lot and a better uh, a handle of the bat, bat control. Ground ball to third foul. The home run that Hicks hit was hit into right field over the seats or over the wall into the seats. And I'd tell you what, if I'm a if I'm a player in this ballpark, man, I'm learning to hit the ball the other way in the air because it just flies out of here. 
Look at Hicks. He's got the wide open stance. He's right on top of the plate. Hands resting comfortably right over the dish. When you see a guy that has an open stance like this, generally speaking, they're looking for something on the inner third that they can turn on. But with the open stance and him being on the top of the plate, he still has coverage of the outside corner. But really, by opening up the hips, I mean, that really allows you to get the bat out in front a lot quicker by the open stance. Runner going, throw down to second, not in time, overslid the bag. But he got back in there. It's a walk anyway for Hicks. That'll put two men on now. And with only one out, Dixon Machado will stand in. CC not so sharp today. Lots of base runners, lots of traffic. Tigers have a four run lead over the big left hander. Machado hit a ball up the middle that should have been a base hit, but Wade, the second baseman, made a great play on him, threw him out. Joe Girardi was talking before the game today, and he was telling me how much he liked Dixon Machado. He said he loves him at shortstop. Joe watches a lot of our games, he told me. He likes to watch Tigers baseball. Now, why would that? I be? don't know, man. He likes to watch our games. Well, he was talking about Miguel Cabrera before the game today, and just how tough he is, and he knows Miggy's not right. He says, but you know what? When he had Miggy in Florida, Miggy played every single day. Miggy likes to play with a lot of pain. But he recognized that, in his opinion, it doesn't look like Miggy's quite 100 percent. Now, some of the swings we've seen Cabrera take, I think, indicate that. Joe said Miggy, one of the toughest players uh, he'd ever been around. Now they go two. Ground ball up the middle. Gregorius flips his second one in the relay. Double play. That'll go six four three to end the inning. Is our score? They've out hit the Yankees five to two. CC Sabathia got the double play ball to end that last half inning, but when he was walking off the mound, man, he and the home plate umpire Mike Estabrook, they had some heated words for one another. CC's wow. fired up. Well, we talked about it early. CC's thrown several pitches today that he thought should have been called strikes that he did not get the call, and apparently, it boiled over there after the double play ball. Well, Astorbrook gave him a little bit of rope there. Normally, you see a pitcher like that walking off the mound, screaming at the umpire and gesturing. Uh, his teammates got in front of him, dragged him out of there. Sanchez back to work, and a wave and a miss by Gary Sanchez. La Mariposa. That's that butterfly changeup that uh, Sanchez uses to his advantage quite often. He throws that pitch about 31% of the time these days. When he's not throwing that changeup, a mixture of cutters, four seam fastballs. Slider and curveball. 
He's got all of them. Hammer down the left field line. That's going to get down, go to the wall. And Sanchez motoring to second, and he is in there standing with a double. Back to back change ups to Gary Sanchez, the second of which was really slow at uh, 74 miles per hour. He didn't fool Sanchez one bit. And Sanchez took this change up at 74 and turned on it. You always want to slide when you go to second base when you're running full speed because you don't want to run the risk of coming off the bag. Sanchez did not slide. He stood up and he nearly overran second base. Gregorius bounced out his first time up. He set himself a good year. And he drives this one to right field on a line, and that ball is gone a home run. A line drive home run just inside the foul pole. Four to two ball game. Well, you knew Sanchez would have to bring his A game today. The Yankees is a really good offensive team, especially in this ballpark. Really, no team in the American League better than the Yankees at home. And Didi Gregorius, what a year he is having. Two run lead now for the Tigers. What a year indeed for Gregorius, his 17th home run. A few years ago when Derek Jeter retired it was Gregorius that had to replace him and that's very difficult to do. I mean you're replacing a Hall of Fame player that spent 20 years at the shortstop position in the Bronx and maybe one of the most popular Yankees ever. Right no doubt. How do you replace a guy like that. Well now without a ton of pressure on you to be sure but Gregorius has done nicely. That's popped up. Right field cruising over is Romine. One gone. Holiday retired. We'll bring up Chase Headley. And the Yankees hit a lot of home runs, especially in this ballpark. I don't know if CC walking off the mound like that kind of fired his team up or what, but they've come out swinging the bats here in the fourth. Headley hit by pitch in his first at bat. Starting to see more and more guys choke up just a little bit on the bat. Headley, one of those guys, too. You take a look about three inches choked up on that bat that he's using. Slap toward left field. Upton is there. Two gone. Now it's on Frazier. The trade that brought Frazier from the Windy City to New York is kind of a homecoming for Frazier. He's from New Jersey. Yankees fan growing up and he is New York through and through all the way to his walk up tune Frank Sinatra. <laughs> and he'll look at a ball inside 1 0. Times River New Jersey hometown for Todd Frazier. Where he made his name in his Little League days. Look at young Todd Frazier. This is 1998 Little League World Series. <laughs> Swing looks the same. It does, man. Going deep. And was on the mound as well. Two balls, one strike. That's one of the things that I do not like about. Uh, all the travel baseball these days because what it has done it has really taken Little League out of play for a lot of kids. Man. Yeah. A lot of so kids right. don't even play Little League baseball anymore man and that used to be uh, you know just one of the coolest things to do. But now with all the travel baseball and kids wanting to play with the best kids and then kids having to start another team Little League is not uh, what it used to be. Well it is so pressurized I think these days and these kids at a young age. Uh, 
they don't get to enjoy the sport maybe as much as you and I did back in in the day as youngsters. And there's a strike call to the outer edge. And not to mention travel baseball pretty expensive. Yes indeed. Three and two. Frazier takes ball four. He is aboard with a two out walk. Here's Tyler Wade. Double in the third for Wade. He got all the way to third base with nobody out, and the Yankees failed to score him. Wade now with two hits in the series and a sparkling defensive plate tonight as well. Fourth round pick a couple of years ago in the 2013 draft by the Yankees was having a fabulous year in the International League. In fact, was leading the International League in hitting at 313. The 1 0. One ball in, one strike. Two run shot by Didi Gregorius has cut the Tigers' lead in half to 4 2. Yankees came into this game with a plus 119 run differential. They've outscored their opponents by 119 runs this year. Yankees have a really good crowd here tonight as well. This place is nearly full on a Tuesday night in the Bronx. Fouled away, stays alive. What did you think of, uh, of this ballpark when it first opened up? This is without question a fabulous ballpark. I mean every amenity is provided here but there was something about the mystique of the old Yankee Stadium when you walked in the old place man you were intimidated. Agreed. Really though I mean this is a special place there's no doubt about that and it's much more comfortable for us in this broadcast booth because that old broadcast booth many have wires and stuff <laughs> everywhere and it was so steep and it was a little dangerous but uh, it's a good ballpark it's, it's a nice yard they had to upgrade you know, I don't think anybody likes to see the old ballparks go by the wayside certainly in Detroit it was tough to let go of Tiger Stadium but right Time marches on, and the amenities here have been uh, fabulous. One and two. Fouled off. Wade stays alive. Top of the order, waiting on deck. Brett Gardner. It's, and it seemed like the old Yankee Stadium, rather right, the overhang or the upper deck and the overhang, just seemed to loom over you on the field. It seemed like you were much closer to the players. Than and not only that, when the crowd would get going, the broadcast booth would it shake. Shake, yeah, <laughs> it would. One and two. Ooh, up and in, look out. Wade goes stumbling out of the box. I had a chance to call a World Series game, or actually three World Series games in Yankee Stadium in 2001 when I was working for the Arizona Diamondbacks. And of course, that was a special World Series. Tigers, I mean, excuse me, Diamondbacks won that in seven in Arizona. But uh, you can only imagine how loud and thrilling those games were in Yankee Stadium. All come from behind wins late with home runs. Now the 2 2 swing and a miss. He got him to chase, and McCann held out to strike three. They get a couple of runs on the Gregorius homer. It's now 4 to 2.
Tire for tires and auto service. Everybody needs a Bell Tire guy. And by Chevrolet, go for thrilling drives and deals at the Chevy Summer Drive. Chevrolet, find new roads. As they look at the Lincoln Center. Tigers playing a three-game series here in New York. They lead here tonight. 4-2 is our score as Sabathia goes back to the mound and misses low to Romai. Two-run shot by D.D. Gregorius has tightened this one up now. Romain Kinsler Matuk facing the veteran lefty. Ball high and the count goes 2 0. CC has now thrown 71 pitches. He is 10 of 13 in first pitch strikes. That's not too bad. Tigers doing a nice job of really making him work tonight. Bouncing ball to short. Gregorius. One gone. Let's bring in Johnny K. Johnny. All right, boys. How are those uh, pineapple drinks treating you? Nice, <laughs> nice, Johnny. Huh? Nice. You like those? Yes. You finish them? Absolutely. Yeah. No, we didn't finish. <laughs> you got a little <laughs> bite to them. I don't... Where you at? I'm up here in uh, section what 434B. With all your friends? <laughs> They're everywhere, man. They always are. <laughs> you know, listen. Uh, earlier today, I had an opportunity before we went to the MLB Replay Center. I had a chance to grab a little uh, bite to eat. You know, food trucks obviously a big part of. Uh, the New York City cuisine scene and and one of the places I was encouraged to try was uh, the halal guys and I'll step out of the way right here Mario that's a base hit to right center field so Kinsler aboard for the first time tonight now, I don't know if you guys are big into food trucks but certainly here in New York City that's what you got to do the halal guys they have a couple locations the best one I think uh, West 53rd and 6th Avenue they've got halal food which basically Middle East Mediterranean spiced food Euros, chicken. I had the combo of the euro and chicken. Hey, Johnny, it's, yeah. at, it's outstanding, isn't it? I've had that every time I come here. No, I'm telling you, listen, I've actually been there twice. We've been here for two days. It's great. And part of the thing is they're open till 4 a.m. on weekdays and 5.30 in the morning on weekends. Now, I don't know why somebody like Rod or me would be up that late <laughs> on a weekend in New York City, but you can get some late night eats. Hey, one more question for you. Did you eat that hot sauce they have, too? Well, listen, they had the they, they put some in the bag. I put a little bit of that hot sauce. We said be careful. The white sauce, that's a safer bet and obviously delicious. Have you ever had one of those, Mario? Dude, you got to do the hot sauce, though. Absolutely. Did you do it? Yeah, have you done it? Man, that's hot. Yeah, but you can't do the hot sauce after 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Take it from experience. Well, let me just say, it's part of the reason I'm sitting all the way up here by myself, boys. All right, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny's great summer adventure coming yeah. through New York. One ball, no strikes on Matuk, who waves and misses. He is right, though. That food is awfully good here. You man. can go to that food truck, man. It'll be 200 people lined yeah. up down the street waiting for that, what Johnny Kane was just eating. The other thing, boys, you know, obviously the team hotel is close by, so we were able to walk down. But if you don't get there early, you know what I mean? When that lunch hour hits, that line will stretch out. Now, the guy's moving through the line pretty quick. Uh, but you got to get there. You got to get your spot in line. I talked to one guy today who's he had moved here from Minnesota, and I said, "Why are you coming here?" The halal guy's truck, and he said, "Well, Rachel Ray spoke highly of it." So nice. it, I guess that's a big thing. Yeah, it's a big endorsement. When Rachel Ray's endorsing it, you got to eat there. One and two on Matuk. It'll float outside. Two and two. Johnny is right about one thing man you get there late you'll be standing in line for a while now they do have somewhat of an assembly line thing going on there where it does go fairly quickly but extremely popular yeah, they've got to figure it out there's so much good food here Mata go for two ground out line out pulled foul oh, look out man Mikey sent one sizzling back in the seats. And off that guy's arm, apparently. He's not going to rub it. But you know it's killing. Oh, you know it is. Two and two. One out single by Kinsler. Tigers have had traffic on the bases seemingly all night. It'll bounce in, and the count now goes three and two. 
Uh, Luis Severino, who started last night for the New York Yankees, lasted just five innings, but he did get the win, but he threw 116 pitches. So Tigers worked him pretty good, and they're also working CeCe well tonight. He's going to throw his 80th pitch, and we're in the fifth. Fouled away. Sabathia made his major league debut at the age of 20 with the Indians. He won 17 games his first year and had it not been a guy or not been uh, the same year that a guy that Ichiro broke in would have won the rookie of the year. I was thinking that I had him winning the rookie of the year that year, but it was Ichiro that got it in 2001. He did. Mm -hmm. And uh, CC finishing second. Swing and a miss. He chased up top and down he goes. 93 on that fastball. Here is the 1 800 call Sam call of the game. Jay up stepped to the plate in his last at bat. It was in the third inning. He got him a breaking ball that was down. And look at the concentration. He went down and got a ball that it looked like Sanchez, the catcher, was about to block. And he golfed it out of here over the left field sign. What a year it's been for Justin Upton. Fifteen RBIs in the month of July as the calendar turns to August today. Upton continuing that big offensive output that he's had all season long. Jay up one for two tonight. You no, know, last night the Tigers struck out 15 times in the ball game. Left a lot of men on base last night, partner. Yeah, they did, and they've struck out only twice in this game. Runner goes, diving stop at third. Frazier, he'll throw to first and out at first base. What a play by Todd Frazier, saving a run for the Yankees. No runs, a hit, and one man left. And we'll see if the Tigers want to take a look at this. They will not. 4 2 our score. You're watching Tigers Baseball presented by Bill Tyler. As we go to the bottom of the fifth inning, Tigers Battle of Pirates, August 9th and 10th at Comerica. Save on great seats with the weekday value pack. Four tickets, hot dogs, chips, and drinks all for 19 bucks per person. 866-66-TIGER for more information. Major League play coming to Comerica with the Pirates in town. Sanchez goes to work. We're in the bottom of the fifth, and he throws ball one outside to Brett Gardner. The leadoff man for the Yanks, it'll be Gardner, then Clint Frazier and Aaron Judge. Frazier is 0 for 2, couple of ground balls. 
And a ball outside. He's run the count two and zero. Oh. And both uh, Anibal Sanchez and CC Sabathia. They don't like the strike zone tonight of Mike Estabrook. Both guys feel like they have been getting squeezed. Here's the 2 0 pitch. And outside, 3 0 now on Gartner. A lot of guys swinging 3 0 these days. You cannot take for granted that a guy like Gardner will not swing 3 0, especially with that short porch of 3 14 down that right field line. He's not swinging. He'll take one right down the middle, 3 and 1. In batting average this year, guys swinging 3 and 0 up around 400. It's Whoa. the highest it's been in a long, long time. Really? Yes. There's a 3 1. In the air toward left. Not deep. Jay up under it. One gone. We check in now with Mickey York. Sounds like it, Mick. Hope it's not too bad for uh, good buddy Max Scherzer. Say high towering fly ball to center. Mott took just about in his tracks. Frazier is out of there, two gone. Max Scherzer is currently second in the majors in strikeouts behind Chris Sale. Chris Sale double digits in strikeouts pretty much every time he toes the rubber for the Boston Red Sox. Chris Archer. Clayton Kershaw and DeGrom also on that list. All pretty good pitchers. Did you think Max would turn out to be as dominant as he has been in a Nationals uniform? I mean, I knew he was good, but did you think he had the ability to dominate like that? Well, what did he strike out last year? 20 Tigers uh, <laughs> when we played him. Yeah, he did. He was on a mission that night. Yeah, he was, and you could tell. I mean, he was amped up. But to answer your question, no. And that's not an indictment on what he thought he would be or 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 his talent level. And we knew he was a great pitcher. He might win another Cy Young. He might. Yep. Absolutely. This would be three. He has really, really turned into one of the most dominant in either league. Meanwhile, low and two on Judge. Who is 0 for 2 in this game? I think we saw Scherzer as a guy that could be a consistent winner, but his delivery, I think, always made us think that I don't know if he's going to have enough consistency to be that dominant. And there was some violence in the delivery, which kind of scared uh, some scouts when he was in college. Judge has been chasing breaking balls out of the strike zone since the second half has began post All Star break. He wasn't really chasing a lot of pitches early in the season, but he's been chasing lately. Ooh, where was that? Good pitch. Surprised he didn't swing at that one. Three and two. Oh, Sanchez really wanted that. Probably deserved it. Swing and a miss. He got him on strikes anyway. One, two, three, fifth inning for Sanchez.
next down at Yankee Stadium and calling all Spartans. Fox Sports Detroit University days are back Friday, August 11th. Purchase your tickets at Tigers.com slash MSU. Ticket package includes a limited edition hat. Don't miss Michigan State University Day with the Tigers. Get your tickets today. The only Tigers lead by a couple of runs now as CC Zabathia goes back to the hill in the sixth. And it'll be Cabrera Castellanos McCann facing Sabathia. And Miggy looks at a ball outside 1 0. Single strikeout run scored for Cabrera tonight. That'll miss high, and again, Sabathia falling behind now 2 and 0 the count. Warren, the right hander, warming up. Sabathia at 85, now 86 pitches, fouled back out of play, two and one. When the Yankees have a pitcher and they trade them away, if they ever have a chance of getting them again, they do it. I mean, Warren, they traded him, they got him back. Kingley? Kingley got him back. Chapman traded him, got, got him, him back. back. Yep. And I'm missing one. I'm going to get him in a minute. There's <laughs> one more. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Stroke to right field on a line. Judge calling it in one gone. And David Robertson. Oh, right. He was their closer. Right. Traded him to the White Sox, brought him back. So four guys on their pitching staff right now, they've traded away and reacquired. Here is Castellanos with one out. Well, they're bullpen, and we got a uh, pretty good view of them last night. We didn't even see Robertson in the game. Some hard throwers. What did Chapman were... end the game with 103? 103. They got some hard throwers in that bullpen. Nick a double and a ground out in this game. Tigers jumped out to a 4 0 lead on CC. A couple of homers. Hicks with a three run shot, and Upton with a solo homer. And CC very seldom goes over 100 pitches these days, so he's probably one inning from leaving. He's at 88 right now. His season high is 102. Big swing there by Nick. And so Joe Girardi you know, watches his uh, left hander very closely. McCann will be next. Here comes the 90th for Sabathia. Sawed him off right back to the mound. CC throws it in the dirt. He short armed it. Headley picked him up though, and there are two gone. 90 now for Sabathia. CC laughing now, but that was not a good throw to first base. No, it was not. Here is McCann, single, fielder's choice, run scored. I don't know if you were with us the last time McCann stepped in the batter's box, but uh, he's choking up on the bat these days. It says it allows him to really handle it a whole lot better. Not choking up a lot, maybe a couple of inches. But just enough to give him a little bit better bat control. You know, it occurred to me that uh, if you're an offensive player these days and you talk to uh, Pitchers and they say the ball is a little bit different. It's flying these days, and many pitchers think that there's a little bit of a different baseball. And you're an offensive player, you know the ball is going to fly. You might as well choke up. Absolutely. It may not cost you a lot of power. Nope. It's a great point. It'll also bring you some back control. That's rolled foul. James also said that so many people are off into the launch as far as the swing is concerned. He said he's not that way. He said earlier in the year he was that way, but he's kind of changed. He says he tries to hit the top of the baseball, which in turn, if you take the proper swing and you catch it just right, you'll get some backspin. Right. And that's exactly what he's trying to do. He's not trying to swing up as far as the launch angle is concerned. 
Well, we talked to Craig Monroe about that uh, recently on one of the broadcasts. He said the same thing. I mean, that, that's the way he hit, creating backspin to gain flight on the baseball. Take a look at this swing here from McCann. It doesn't take him very long to go from point A to point B. And look at him coming straight down through that ball, trying to catch the top half of it. One and two. Sabathia in search of a one, two, three, sixth. Now the one, two. And he got him. Strike three. And McCann says no. I think it's way outside. CC finally got that pitch after complaining all night. The sixth here at Yankee Stadium, the Detroit Tigers Liney Friday's Party Pack is available for all Friday home games. Package includes a game ticket and a voucher for a 20 ounce beer, starting as low as $19 while supplies last. For tickets, please go to Tigers.com. We'll find all the information you need right there. Sanchez, good work tonight. Going back to the mound here in the sixth, and he's got Gary Sanchez to lead it off. See, third time that uh, Gary Sanchez has let off an inning tonight. The only blemish tonight for Anibal, the two run shot by D.D. Gregorius. Tigers have four runs, six hits. Yanks, two runs, four hits. And has popped up to the right side. Easy play there for Hicks. One pitch, one gone. We check in again with Johnny Kane. Hi, right, boys, out here in straightaway center field. The um, you know earlier today, I know Rod had a chance to come with me. You know, basically New York City is kind of the central hub for Major League Baseball. League offices are here, certainly. MLB Network is in Secaucus, New Jersey, and then. They have the MLB Replay Operations Center. They call it The Rock over in Chelsea. And we had an opportunity to get in there, kind of see the lay of the land and how replays come about. You know, so on a full slate of games, let's say you've got 15 games on a full slate. They've got uh, six umpires on staff there, 36 monitors, which they can cut into that. So you, not just the 36 monitors, you go pitcher in pitcher. They're watching every game, anticipating a potential replay coming up. So they said, Usually about 60% of the games uh, you're going to have a replay. So on a given night, say anywhere from 8 to 10 replays. Average replay time, about a minute and 30 seconds. So, of course, MLB expanding the replay in 2014. But what a beautiful facility, 900 square feet. 
over there in Chelsea, New York. And oh, Rod Allen, you got to get in the hot seat, put that headset on. I sure did. They got to, you got to try your uh, you know try your hand there at um, you know reversing the call. Yeah. How'd you feel? I felt pretty good. I did it in 57 seconds. Yeah, you did. Feel pretty good about that. How long did it take you to do yours? <laughs> hey man, I like it. I was just trying to get it right, Rod. <laughs> Minute and 37 seconds for me. I want to make sure I saw every angle. You're one of the reasons why the games are so long, <laughs> Johnny Kane. Hey, man, if I had that job, they'd run me out of town quicker than this one. <laughs> There's a wave and a miss, and Gregorius is out on strike. Sanchez continues to roll along. It was pretty cool, though, Mario. What they did tell us at the command center is uh, called the Rock is the fact that this year, average uh, replays are a minute six seconds, and that's from the time they start the replay back in the command center, not from the time that Brad Ausmus would say challenge. That's about a minute and thirty seconds, so they're starting to get the numbers down a little bit. Well, the aim this year is to get it to within two minutes. Sometimes they're able to do it, sometimes they're not able to do it, but uh, that is certainly what they're trying to get accomplished this year. And I think anything they can do to speed this thing up, because let's be honest, you know, you want to get the calls right, but you also want to speed up the games, and the games are not getting any faster. And they also talked about the, the, the two plays that are challenged the most. Obviously, the tag play around second base, where guys come off the bag or third base. And also to play at first base. Those are the two most challenged plays. Matt Holiday, the batter. But it was pretty cool sitting in that chair and then looking at the replay and then knowing what the call was and then having to decide whether you were going to change the call or not. And the play I had was a pretty close play, but it wasn't enough to overturn it. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Hammer to the air and deep into left field. Upton is on the run, still going back, and JF can't get it. It's off the wall. It'll be a two out hit for Holiday and very nearly left the ballpark. A double for Matt Holiday. Holiday came in with outstanding numbers against Anibal Sanchez anyway. That's his second hit of the night. He came in with a 417 career batting average against Anibal. I don't know if he thought he had it or not, but he's not running out of the batter's box and really had to hustle to get a double here. Sure, Joe Girardi not real happy with Holiday, but he was able to get to second base. Right off the base. Wants to roll by Montuk. I don't know if he would have gotten to third if he was running hard the entire way, but he might have. 399 to left center field gap. I mean, that's one of the biggest gaps in all of baseball. Usually it's about 365 in the gap to left center field and right center field, which would have been a home run in most ballparks. Headley trying to score him. One ball, one strike. Yankees now have five hits. Sanchez has pitched well in this ballpark. He's made two prior starts here. At Yankee Stadium. He's 2 0 with an ERA just over three. So not afraid of the bright lights here in New York City. Four of the five hits the Yankees have tonight have gone for extra bases. Good change up there at 73. He really had Headley fooled and out in front. Sanchez likes to double up with that change up too, and he's varying the speeds on it. Trying to strand a two out double. Hit him. Is that the second nope. time he's hit him today? Foul ball. Apparently oh. hit the bat. Mm. Yes, it would have been. Now for the bat. Frazier waiting on deck. And now McCann out to the mound. Sanchez hit 87 pitches here in the sixth inning. Just missed low. 
Action in the Tigers pen. Stump is the lefty. Suphold is the righty. Now the 2 2. Little chopper to the second baseman. Kinsler is there. And that'll end the threat. No runs. A two out double is stranded. Brought to you by the Sam Bernstein Law Firm, official legal services sponsor of Fox Sports Detroit. And by the new film Detroit, opening everywhere August 4th, rated R. Tigers over the Yankees, 4-2, to top half of the seventh inning, and it's time for cricket, something to smile about. John Hicks has given us something to smile about tonight. Three run home run against CC Sabathia in the second inning, and he also made a real nice play and taking a possible double away from Didi Gregorius down that right field line. Hicks picking and grinning to die. He's had a great night and on base twice. And that defensive gem. He will face a new Yankees pitcher now. CC is done after six innings of work tonight for the Yanks. Without six hits, four runs. Tigers up four to two. There's a ball high to Hicks. It is a wall side windows change. Adam Warren comes on. Warren, pretty good arm. He's got a little extra fastball. Gets up to 94, but this is slider, and that he uses more than his fastball. He throws his slider 43 percent of the time, and he's having a good year. There's that slide piece, and Warren will throw him out. One gone in the Tigers seventh. Warren is rare for a guy that uh, pitches in the bullpen these days, but he's a former starter, which means he does have all four pitches, and he uses all four of the pitches out of the bullpen: fastball, curveball, slider, and a changeup. Machado in search of his first hit, grounded to third. Right there is Frazier. Is that two pitches and two outs? Yep. Hicks gone, Machado gone. Two away. Romine's going to have to take a pitch. Try to remember the last time I saw three pitches, three outs. I can't remember. I don't. Can you? Well, I, I mean, it's, it, I mean, usually if, it, if the first two guys make an out, the, the next take. guy has to take. Yeah. So I don't know if I've really ever seen it, Mario, to be honest with you. I'm sure it's happened, but I don't know if I've seen it. Oh, Hicks actually saw two. Mm. Yeah, so uh, take it back. Well, uh, Romine it took a strike anyway, 0 and 1. It felt like he saw one. <laughs> now Warren with the 0 1 pitch. It'll chop her up the middle. It's going to be a quick inning. 1 2 3 go the Tigers. 
We're headed to the bottom of the seventh. That's against CeCe Sabathia, the starter. Justin Upson also homered. He homered in the third inning. It's a solo shot. It was down at the bottom of the strike zone. He golfed it out to left field. The Yankees, however, they got on the board and themselves. He did Gregorius, their shortstop, having an outstanding season. He hit a two-run home run in the fourth. Tigers lead the ball game 4-2. We go to the stretch here. Four runs on six hits for the Tigers and the Yankees. Two runs on five hits tonight. Let's take a look at our bell tire pitch by pitch. And the ball Sanchez had a couple of starts in the new Yankee Stadium and has pitched very well. He's 2 0 with a 3 ERA. He's thrown a ton of ground balls here today. The Yankees really haven't been able to barrel Sanchez up. He's also thrown a few fly balls. He only has three strikeouts. He's using that fastball. Using the change up in the breaking ball, and he's kept a really good team at bay here in their home ballpark where they post some of the best numbers in the American League. And Sanchez will answer the bell as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. He will take on a Yankees team that'll feature Frazier, Wade, and then the top of the order, Brett Gardner. Out distribution for Anibal Sanchez tonight. Eight ground balls, seven flyouts, three strikeouts. And he's doing something here tonight, Mario, that Brad very seldom allows him to do, and that's pitch into the seventh inning. Yeah, he's been so good tonight that he'll get an opportunity to do that, but normally fifth or sixth, he's out of the game. If anybody gets on base, then Brad will go to the bullpen. He will have a very short leash uh, for Sanchez here in the seventh inning. He has gone into the seventh once this year, that start against the Indians, six and a third. And now he'll go back to the mound here in the seventh. Frazier ground out walk. Tigers lead by two. Frazier with a big swing 0 and 1. 40 home runs last year for Frazier. He has followed that up with 17 this year between his two squads, the White Sox and the Yankees. The 0 1. Frazier has settled in a little bit more now with the Yankees. Uh, Joe Girardi said after the game last night that he felt that when he came over in the trade, he was extremely excited and played that way a little bit. And he's kind of settled in now. He'll pop it up. First base side for Hicks. And one gone. 
Time now for the unlimited baseball break brought to you by T Mobile. Here are some happenings around the league. Ahmed Rosario, number two prospect in baseball, debuting tonight for the Mets. At a 328 average in Las Vegas. The Dodgers finished up July. How about this, Rod? They lost three times in the whole month. That is ridiculous, man. Best winning percentage in any month since the 1935 Cubbies. We'll see the Orioles next. Jonathan Scope is hot. Jonathan Scope, man, he has been on fire really the entire season. He made his first All Star team. Tyler Wade, the batter. Showing bunt that time looks at a ball outside. Double and a strikeout for Wade. The Orioles just acquired a new shortstop. Tim Beckham right from the Tampa Bay Rays. I thought possibly when J.J. Hardy retired. Or got traded they would move Manny Machado right back to shortstop his natural position. And scope would go to third base but that's not the case. Mata candles the lazy fly ball from Tyler Wade. Two outs. How about that ball today? Dealing, keeping him off balance. And really, the the two run homer that he gave up to Gregorius was a pitch at about almost his ankles. That he went out, and golfed into the seats in the short porch and right. 95 total pitches. His only stressful inning, and not really stressful at all, is the fourth inning where he needed 19 pitches to get three outs. Brett Gardner is 0 for 3. It's one of the reasons why Sanchez having a lot of success here tonight. He has been able to keep Gardner off the bases. When Gardner gets loose, this team plays with a different energy. It's a different baseball team when he's hitting doubles and stealing bases. Gardner about an 80 percent success rate in the big leagues in stealing bases. It's out of control good. Really good. Good baseball player. Sanchez has fallen behind him 2 and 0. Oh. And take ball three. We were talking earlier about the fact that he had to walk on to his college college of Charleston. He showed up one day and the coach told him well you might as well not come back. I don't think that you're going to be able to play on this team. But he showed up the next day anyway. Somehow made the team. And turned out to be a really good player at that college. A similar story for Jose Altuve who was trying out uh, at a, uh, a baseball camp to try and get noticed to sign a professional contract. After told him to go home day, too. Yeah, they said don't come back. Yeah you're too small. Way too small for this game, and uh, I think he and Gardner have something in common in that they probably have had to fight that their entire careers. Mm -hmm. Here's a 3 1. Hammered to right field, base hit. Gardner with a two out single. Well, the upcoming matchup presented by Wallside Windows tomorrow in the finale is going to be Masahiro Tanaka and Jordan Zimmerman. Tanaka really hasn't had a very good year, but he will be pitching with a lot of confidence tomorrow. He had 14 strikeouts in his outing uh, last five, five days ago, going up against Jordan Zimmerman. So it, it appears Sanchez will not survive this inning. Let's see. Nope, they're going to the bullpen. So we'll step aside. Wallside windows pitching change. We'll be back.
Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank, a part of Detroit and the community since 1849. Your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers visit ChevyDetroit.com. See why Chevy drives the Motor City. And by Wallside Windows, we can do that. We are the factory. There's the East River on a gorgeous evening here in New York. Hey, baseball proudly supports the ALS Home Health Initiative, which provides in-home care for those affected by Lou Gehrig's disease. Go to MLB.com slash for Pete's sake to learn more. Well, the Tigers going to the bullpen now. They got the hard throwing Bruce Rondone checking in. The last couple of outings for Rondone have not necessarily been all that uh, all that good. Rondone has a plus fastball, mid 90s, good slider, also a changeup. Frazier looks at a strike. 100 miles per hour with that first fastball thrown by Bruce Rondone. There are the numbers. In his last three outings, eight earned runs. That's why that earned run average is way up for Bruce right now. Frazier is 0 for 3. Pulled foul. First pitch fastball at 100, then he comes back with a slider that stayed up in the strike zone. Sometimes you can help a guy out. If you throw 100 miles an hour, then you come back with that. Spinning slider at 87. Sometimes you do a guy a favor. I mean, he threw 100 miles an hour. Go ahead and dust him. Sanchez, outstanding work tonight. Six and two thirds. Frazier pounds it foul. He got a hold of the triple digits fastball. It's a high leg kick for Rondon. If Gardner wanted to steal second base, he could steal second and really. And not be contested. McCann probably would not have much of a shot at throwing him out. Another foul again at this time. 102. What's gotten into Bruce? I don't know, but he's coming to play tonight. I'm a couple of days ago. He came into a game. He was only throwing 90 miles an hour. He's getting after tonight. Trying to take care of Frazier here. He's the tying run at the plate, 4 2 in the seven. Runner goes. Outside, no throw. Stolen base standing up for Brett Gardner, his 14th of the year. 14 steals for Gardner. He's only been caught three times. Meanwhile, Frazier doing a pretty nice job of getting a piece of the 100 mile power fastballs that Rondon continues to throw him. Right back up the middle. Kinsler is there on a hop. Frazier is out, and the inning is over. No runs, one hit, one man left. Tigers baseball tonight presented by Bell Tire.
Well, Mick, it's amazing a guy can make a play like that, but we watched Jackson patrol center field and make several really nice plays, but I'm not so sure he's made one like that. Ian Kinsler will get it started here in the eighth for the Tigers who try and build on a four to two lead. I know Tiger fans are wishing Torrey Hunter would have made that catch a few oh, years ago. No doubt about that. Same place. Kinsler looks at ball one missing inside. Kinsler Mott took at Upton. In the Tigers eighth inning and Warren is still out there. He came on in the seventh and got a one two three on three ground ball outs. Here's ball two missing outside to Kinsler. Ian's had a couple of hits in the series and now a four game hitting streak for the Tigers. Popped him up. Shallow right field who wants it. The second baseman Wade. And Kinsler is out one gone. Alex Wilson now warming up in the Tigers pen with the trade of Justin Wilson Shane Green has moved into the closers role now for the Tigers and it looks like uh, Wilson has uh, taken over the eighth inning he's thrown the ball well in his last three outings he feels like uh, the life on his fastball has come back and we're talking about Brett Gardner and the two hundred and thirty two steals that he does have now after stealing that last bag. That tied Roy White in all time Yankee history. You know, Roy White was a, a really good player that nobody seems to talk about in, in Yankee lore. Well, there's always some of those guys that get lost here in New York because mm -hmm. they always have so many stars. I mean, they've got Reggie Jacksons of the world and Ron Guidry's and Clemens and Jeters and the little guys. I mean, the Brick Gardeners of the world. Those guys kind of go unnoticed a lot. Ma took us over three and uh, they're running out of numbers to retire. Pretty much all the single digit numbers are gone. The one one. Ma took cuts and misses one and two. There's that slider yeah, that Warren will throw about 35 percent of the time. And it's a good pitch for him. Good to see the Tigers come out and play uh, a pretty clean game. Had one base running blunder a little earlier in the contest, but it didn't hurt him. Three run home run by Hicks in that same frame. But it's good to see him come out and play a little bit more relaxed, Mario, now that the whole trade deadline is passed and they kind of know who's going to be here and whatnot. That final day, July 31st, always seems to be a weird day, whether you're buying or selling or standing pat, because there's just so much going on. You guys really can't. Concentrate on getting ready for the game that night. I don't think. And, and a guy like Justin Verlander, I mean, certainly was on, I think, pins and needles most of the day yesterday. Well, we took a shot of Verlander, not his last start on Sunday, but the start before that when he came out of the game, when there was a lot of talk about him possibly going here, possibly going there. And you could tell, it looked like to me that he thought that might be the final time he'd take the ball for the Tigers in that ballpark. Well he didn't tip his cap that game against KC but in his last start he did when he came out because he just wasn't sure he was going to be around after the 31st and he wanted the fans to know that he appreciated them. Mm -hmm. He has said that on several occasions how the fans have always had his back. Three and two Justin will get the ball. Justin will get the ball in Baltimore where he's had a lot of success over the years. Found the way close to his hometown. It's going to be a four game set coming up against the O's once this series is complete. Those have turned into some grueling stops when we go there. Usually it's for four days, and they've always had a pretty good offensive team. Some competitive games against the Baltimore Orioles in Maryland. It's always hot, right? Very warm, middle of the summer. Again the three two and another foul that went off the mask of Sanchez. Pretty good bat here by Matuk. Oh direct hit.
always wonder what the cumulative effect is on your neck when you take that many shots. Can't be good. No. And really, it's not just catchers, but home plate umpires, too. And he walked him. Great at bat for Matsuk, a one out walk. That'll bring up Jay up. Uh, earlier in the contest, Justin Upton got a breaking ball at the bottom of the strike zone. This is his first career hit against CC Sabathia. Wasn't a bad pitch by Sabathia. Now that ball was down around Jay Up's shoe tops. And he was able to go down and get it and golf it about 10 rows deep in left field. Takes some strength to hit that ball that far. 18th of the year for Upton. Career high 31. Which he tied last year in the Tigers uniform. Ball one. I still think that the last two months of the year that Upton had was probably one of the best two month stretch that I've ever seen out of a guy who had struggled so much earlier that year. I wouldn't argue with that, man. He was simply on fire. Everything that he hit had tremendous backspin, and he was hitting balls 400 feet with a wonderful launch angle. Hit speed with regularity about 110 miles per hour. Justin has always known, been known as one of the guys to have really quick back since he came to the big leagues. 15 extra base hits since the start of July. Might as well get number 16 right here. The 1 0. Slider out over the plate there and Upton set it back into the seats. Tigers hit a three run homer in the second off the bat of Hicks and then the Upton homer in the third. They have not scored since. Although they've had some chances. That Hicks homer got him jump started quickly against Sabathia. Strike call 93 with a really good cut fastball there thrown by Warren on the outside black. Fastball to 95 for Adam Warren. Low of 78. That would be his curveball. Ball high that Upton would not offer at. He's got a better bullpen now these days, do you think? The Indians or the Yankees? Whoa. Well, we haven't seen the Indians in a while. And uh, Indians are good, there's no doubt about that, with Allen and uh, with Miller and some of the other guys that are thrown in the back end of that bullpen. Shaw. Uh, I have to see him again, but I don't think there's a bullpen that throws as hard as this bullpen. No, nope. agreed. You don't have as many guys throwing 95 to 100 miles an hour. They got two guys throwing 100 miles an hour in the bullpen. Well, three guys. They got three guys from 100 miles an hour in the bullpen. Canely, Batances, and Chapman. Now, the Houston pen we just saw, which really didn't perform all that well against the Tigers over the weekend, still a pretty good bullpen. They got Giles at the back end who throws really hard, but they've got a different kind of pen. Yeah, they got some swing and miss stuff with sliders and curveballs and change ups. It appears they're bullpen pieces. Everybody has a signature pitch. And when they come into the game, that's exactly what you're going to get. And I think that's what analytics does for teams like Houston, teams like the Yankees. The Yankees obviously like hard throwers. The Houston Astros, they look for guys that have one really good pitch. Pretty good swing there by Justin on that fastball. Upton looks at strike three. Apparently, Jay up thought it was outside. Two gone. I don't know about that one. One of the things that I also uh, learned today when we went to Chelsea, that's a ball. It was pulled back into the strike zone by Sanchez. You could clearly see that. So Jay up had a 
legitimate beef there and it's been a rough night tonight for Mike Estabrook. But I also learned that Mario the umpires get graded every single night right every single night by the commissioner's office not only on close plays close calls replays you name it. Yeah they're certainly out of under a, a lot of scrutiny. And they have to do something that no one else has to do. We get a chance to look at replays in the command center. They look at replays. These guys have to make the call full speed every night. And most of the time they're right. Yeah. I think a lot of times we think that most of the time they're wrong. But I think we can go back and look at the numbers and look at the uh, the replays and, and the the stats about the umpires. They're right most of the time. They're outstanding at what they do. Here's a 1 1 high fly ball right field. Judge has room, and that'll be it for the Tigers. No runs, a walk, one left. We go to the bottom of the eighth. It is brought to you by Miller Light. Anima Sanchez very good in the game here tonight. And once Brad Osmonds went out to get him, he summoned Bruce Rondone out of the bullpen. Rondone came in, first pitch he threw 100 miles an hour. He went under through one pitch at 102. So Rondone had his foot on the gas pedal here tonight. It's very encouraging to see. Rondone came in with a tying run at the plate. And got it done, and now he's going to hand things over to Alex Wilson in the Wallside Windows pitching change. And Wilson was talking earlier today, and he was talking about how good he feels right now. He's pitching in his 46th game. He got off to a really good start this year, but he had a couple of months there where he wasn't as effective. But he says he feels good now. The ball is 93 94 coming out of his hand, and he's looking forward to a very positive last two months of the season. Well, it certainly would help the Tigers to be sure with the trade of Wilson. Justin, that is. Aaron Judge, the batter, he's leading things off here in the eighth. It'll be Judge Sanchez Gregorius. Alex. And he missed it low, and the count goes 2 0. Oh. Alex Wilson is the oldest member of the Tigers' bullpen. Really? He's 30 years old. He has four years of major league experience, but he's the Elder statesman down there. I would not have guessed that actually, but going through the names, it makes sense. Two other count. Judge popped it up, straight up, mile high. Kinsler waiting for it to fall, and it finally does. One gone.
MLB.com at bat is your number one mobile app for live Tigers baseball. Stay connected with a fully customizable experience. Get Tigers home screen icons and app features, as well as game day, live game, video highlights, radio broadcasts, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. Uh oh. Ah, we got somebody running out on the field now. He's not very athletic. Ooh. He depleted him. <laughs> Tigers have a couple of guys warming up in the bullpen, stump and green, and they're watching some guy get carted off the field now. You see that tackle? I did. It was pretty impressive. Oh well. Well, a jail cell awaits. They still give you one phone call? I don't know. I don't want to find out. Or text. Probably text these days yeah, when you go to jail, right? Send money. He gonna be in the judges' chamber tomorrow. Now, apparently, there's only one way off the field here. They're dragging him all the way across the field off the center field wall to get him out of here. Now, the judges' chamber. <laughs> Getting ready to uh, hand down a verdict. Yeah. One gone. Gary Sanchez will step in. That fastball that he got judged to pop on, up on is was 94 miles an hour. Whoa. Little extra giddy up. Ninety three on that fastball, one oh on Sanchez. Wilson was saying today, though, one of the issues that he had, Mario, when he was kind of struggling, he was leaving the rubber prematurely. Now he says he's resting on that back side a little bit more. You can see a little pressure there. And he says by doing that, and you saw him bend the knees right there, he's resting over the rubber comfortably and he's able to push off of it and he's got more life on his pitches right now. Good slider there at 89. One ball, one strike on Gary Sanchez. Watch that back knee. It's another fastball at 94. Tigers are gone with Rondon after Sanchez, and now Alex Wilson here in the eighth. Brad saying yesterday that really uh, anointing Shane Green the closer was a no brainer. He's been the most consistent of the Tigers remaining out of that bullpen. There's a drive to left field. It's going to get down. Base hit. Jay up can't handle it. It's going to turn into an extra base for Sanchez. He's at second now with one out. See if they charge up there with an air. And run to his left to get to it. Here goes Brad. The Yankees have their sixth hit. Wilson gives up the baseball. Wall side windows pitching change.
is here at the ballpark four to two the Tigers currently have the lead. Yeah he was in Cooperstown over the weekend with all of the other Hall of Famers and the new inductees as well. Let's take one more look at the Upton play Justin Upton ran a long way to get to this ball and it could have very easily been called a double as a matter of fact anybody running but Gary Sanchez and I believe it is a double because they would have been stretching into a double but Sanchez doesn't run well so the official scorekeeper made the right call by giving Justin an air. Single E seven Daniel Stumpf is on now to take on the left handed batting D.D. Gregorius. Tying run to the plate here in a two run game we're in the eighth. Driven to right center field a base hit that will get a run in. Gregorius with an RBI single that cuts the lead to four to three and that is his third RBI of the night. Gregorius batting 265 against left handed pitching this year jumps on the first fastball that stump throws up there and scalds it into right center field and it looks like Brad Osmus is going to make another pitching change. Stump faces one battery is unable to get the lefty and now Shane Green will come on with Matt Holiday do up. Another change will be back. It's a one run game. After surrendering the RBI single to D.D. Gregorius. Gregorius having a really good year. He chokes up on the bat. He gets a first pitch fastball. Runner in scoring position drives it right back through the box. And Sanchez, even though he didn't have good speed, able to come home and score the third run of the evening for the Yankees. All right, with Shane Green coming to game now, we uh, bring in Johnny Kane. Hey, listen, guys, I talked to Shane Green after the Justin Wilson trade. He said, listen, I've never closed before. It's going to be a little bit of trial and error. I'm going to have to adapt along the way. I've always said as a starter, I want to show up at the park on my start day. My teammates would think that we're going to win the ba baseball game. He says, as a closer, I want him to know when I come in, the game's over. That's my goal. Well, he's got two career saves, but he's coming in with one out here in the eighth. And a runner on base and Green has been the best in baseball last couple of years when he has inherited a runner. Very few have scored. He's been locked down in that regard. Yankee Stadium suddenly has come alive. Here is Holiday. And he looks at ball one as that bounces in. Good stop by McCann. It's not often the closer has to come in and get five outs to get a save, but that's exactly what Green will be called upon to do here tonight. Holiday is single double in three at bats. Gregorius at first base, Shane Green on the mound. They were dealt in the same trade a few years back. Ball high, and the count goes 2 0. Oh. Now action. Robertson and Chapman. 
It's so deep their bullpen. Is. It's deep. They're warming up two closers. Here's the 2 0. Strike call, 2 and 1. Would you say the Yankees were the winners at the trade deadline this yep. year? You think they made the most significant deals? I think so. I think Darvish certainly is going to make a big difference in L.A. I think Cubs uh, probably helped themselves out a little bit too. But yeah, yeah I'm going with the Yanks. And Joe was very happy with the additions that Brian Cashman uh, made for his team. Very happy about that today. Sonny Gray, Kane, Frazier, David Robertson. Ground ball back up the middle should be two. Machado takes it himself, and that's a double play. I see you, Greeny. That could not have worked out any better for the Tigers. And it's going to be Castellanos to start things off for the Tigers, and they will face a new pitcher for the Yankees. David Robertson coming on now for the Yanks. Yeah, a lot of these Tigers very familiar with Robertson. He was closing games for the Chicago White Sox the last couple of years. He had 13 saves this year and 15 chances. Really good ERA. The whip also under one 55 strikeouts for Robertson. Just 11 base on balls. So he's having a really good year in Chicago. Castellanos and McCann then Hicks Tigers trying to get that run back they're up by one skinny run now as we go to the ninth Nick swings and misses to get things rolling here 0 and 1 double and three at bats for Castellanos Samantha went six. Adam Warren went two. And now Robertson here in the ninth. Swing and a miss again. That one right down the middle of the plate, 0 and 2. And he got him strike three Nick caught looking and that is one out and then Robertson has that cut fastball. It's a pitch that he learned when he was pitching in the bullpen setting up for Mariano Rivera 
Uh, that last one at 94, it looks like it's a straight fastball, but you can see uh, that ball just kind of inch its way to the outside corner. Nicholas gave up on it, but that ball actually got quite a bit of plate. Really good pitch for Robertson. He has not given up a hit uh, since he has been a Yankee to a right-handed batter. They are 0 for 13 now with six strikeouts. Excuse me, seven strikeouts against righties. Here is McCann. Ripped up the middle in the center base hit. You like my reverse psychology? Yeah, James McCann now has a single, and there you go. McCann is swinging that bat with a lot of confidence right now. Leg up, gets it back down, takes that little breaking ball, and rips it right back up the middle. Real good timing. Tigers have their eighth hit. Here's John Hicks. Homer walk ground out. Also made a real nice play at first base, taking a hit away from D.D. Gregorius, who could have three hits today. The Yankees will have Robertson under a contract for one more year. He's in the third year of a four year deal that he signed with Chicago back in December of 14. He was originally a 17th round draft choice back in 2006 of the Yankees. One ball and one strike. He's having a really good year against left handers and against right handers. Tigers got four runs early but have not scored since the third inning tonight. And they're holding on to a one run lead. Yankees in the bottom of the ninth have the bottom three Headley Frazier Wade do up. I did not know this but minimum 500 innings pitched. 12 strikeouts per nine for Robertson which is the best in the majors. Yeah I read that and uh, I did double take on that. Mm. Fouled off. That wouldn't bid Sanchez. One and two. 741 strikeouts in 558 innings. For David. Tigers really have not had a whole lot of issues with him lately though they get good swings against him. Swing and a miss. So Hicks is down two gone his second strikeout. I want to say there was a game last year in Chicago where the Tigers had two home runs against him in the ninth. Was it two or three. It might have been three I know Collins had a pinch hit homer. It's a good pitch here. I remember the game but I can't remember who with the homers so though. you're right on Collins though for sure. Here is Machado with two outs. Strike one to Dixon. It was July the 24th last year the Tigers hit three in the ninth against him. There's a base hit to left field for Machado. McCann will go to second and stop there. Two on two out. Yeah, pretty nice swing here by the youngster Dixon Machado gets set really early with that front foot real good balance. Real nice level swing turned in by the uh, the rookie. So Machado who's getting the started short tonight for Iglesias chips in with a ninth inning single here. And now we'll see if the Tigers can get a two out hit from Romine to get a run. Three ground outs to the shortstop tonight. And there's ball one darting low. Good arms on the corners for the Yankees with the two kids Frazier and Judge. Gardner throwing is not his strength in center field. If you're thinking base hit and McCann scoring. 2 and 0. Oh. 
flared out of play. Two balls and one strike. How's Romine's brother? I know he got hit the other day. Have you heard any word on I him? I have not. No, Austin. Right. A catcher for the Yankees. Had a rough day a couple days ago. Yeah. Really rough day. That's in there. A strike called at the top of the zone. Two and two. Romine has grounded out to the shortstop in all three of his plate appearances here tonight. Here's the 2 2 line drive and into center field a base hit. Gardner charging. They're going to try and score the run. The throw. Tag. He is out at home. Great call by Dave Clark. I'm not mad at him one bit. Gardner made a good throw, airmailing the cutoff man to get James McCann. Romine single, but Gardner is up to the task as he throws out James McCann at the plate. <laughs> Gardner, did you see where he threw that ball from? He was basically at second base. And Robertson loving it. It stays a one run game. Shane Green coming up, trying to complete a five out save. Out of the bottom of the ninth inning at Yankee Stadium, Sanchez awfully good tonight. Six and two thirds, allowing two earned runs. Homers for Hicks, Upton for the Tigers, and Gregorius for the Yankees. And Shane Green trying to get the final three outs. He came on to get a huge double play after the Yanks got a run in the eighth. And now he's got the bottom three: Headley, Frazier, and Tyler Wade. Dave Park situating his outfielders. Here is Headley. He'll look at strike one. A yeah, nice little slider. Get me over slider thrown by Green. First pitch. Green has a fastball that will top out at about 96 with movement. He also has a slider. He'll cut the fastball as well. Outside one ball one strike. Shane's first save opportunity since the trade of Justin Wilson. He has two career saves. Outside two and one. It's been a very uh, different route for Shane Green. He was a starting pitcher at the beginning of the year last year and then eventually worked into the bullpen. And that was two years ago, right? Then, right. But last year kind of uh, settled into a bullpen role. And now this year finds himself closing games. Yeah, Brad likes him better out of the bullpen. Here's the 2 1. Swing and a miss. Here it is. Hit it. 
96 with a two seam fastball right by Headley. Green, a former starter, which means he's got two different fastballs. He's got a cutter and a two seamer. He also has that curveball to go along with the slider. That one slides low and away, three and two. Well, you don't want to walk him. Joe Girardi probably will go to his bench and go to a pitch runner, somebody a little bit faster than Headley. Thinking maybe Torres. Here's the three two. Ground ball to short. Ooh, took a bad hop, but Kinsler stayed with it. Headley is out, one gone. We've seen a lot of wicked hops here tonight. Bring up Frazier. Tigers this year are 11 and 16 in one run games. Yankees 11 and 19. Frazier just has not had good numbers since the beginning of last year against the Tigers. A buck 55. Seven homers though. Nearly had one last night. Fine play by a to rob Frazier of a homer. Green starts him off with a breaking ball 0 and 1. Tigers pitch him away. They have pitched him away since he wore the Cincinnati Reds uniform. They're going back out there again. Strike called on the outer edge 0 and 2. That's a beautiful pitch. That's a cut fastball there at 90 miles an hour. Ellsbury has moved to the on deck circle with Wade due up next. Stayed outside, wouldn't bite. Now the one two. Swing and a miss. 97 on the fastball there from Green. He reached back and there are two gone. So far so good in the first save appearance for Shane. And it's not the easiest of saves if he's able to get it. Five out save tonight for Green if he gets one more out. 97 mile per hour fastball bottom of the strike zone with a whole lot of late life on it. So here is Ellsbury now with two outs their last chance. You don't want to make any mistakes on the inner third of home plate. You've got that short porch down the right field line. You want to make Ellsbury use the biggest part of the ballpark if he's going to put the ball in play which means you want him to hit the center field or left field. You don't care about a hit. You don't want to give up a home run here. 0 for 3 in the opener last night. And he'll take a strike on the outside corner 0 and 1. Ellsbury not able to even get off the bench these days with the the way the kids have been playing, Frazier, Clint Frazier, Gardner, and Judge. That last fastball from Green was 98. Ooh. You don't think he's charged up? He is indeed. He needs one more out, the 0 1. Now it's 0 2. Most of the fastballs that Greeny has thrown have been 95 and above. Top fastball, 98. Rondon was breathing fire too when he came in tonight. He got up to 102. A little bit of a different attitude from the Tigers bullpen tonight. They are one strike away. Green has thrown 16 pitches and nine of them have been above 95 miles an hour. Ooh. Close. Ellsbury still kicking one and two the count. Eighteenth pitch coming up for Green. Low ball two. Top of the order on deck. That's Brett Gardner. 
You don't want to deal with him. He's had some heroics recently. Four to three, Tigers lead. We're in the ninth. Sanchez terrific outing tonight. Rondone came on to get an out in the seventh. Wilson Stump and Green in the eighth. And now Greeny here in the ninth. Way outside and the count goes full now. Three and two. He overthrew that 98 mile an hour heater. Shane will take a walk around the mound, regather. Here comes the crowd. More than 43,000 tonight at Yankee Stadium. And the 3 2. He walked in ball four. Tying run is on now for the Yankees. Pitch hit walk for Ellsbury. Bring McCann out to the mound. Twenty thrown for Greeny. Ten strikes, ten balls. Here is Brett Gardner. Single and fourth bats and a steal tonight. Tying run at first. Ellsbury can run. You want to do the same exact thing with Gardner. You do not want to throw him anything on the inside part of the plate, which would allow him to pull the ball to right field. Make him slap at the left field. Strike one on uh, Gardner. Ooh, McCann wanted that one outside, and he missed his location with 96 inside, but. Gardner couldn't pull the trigger. Nothing. I'd walk him and go after the rookie Frazier. Well, his run would be the winning run. Well, true. And now here comes Brand. But I'd much him. rather pitch to, uh, to I'd much rather pitch to Frazier here. Well, that wasn't even close. Sometimes, Omar, you can't be afraid to put that winning run on, though. Yeah. I mean, it's not something that you do with regularity. I mean, but if you want to pitch to the rookie or you want to pitch to Gardner here, who's left handed? Ellsbury motoring all the way to third. Romine did a nice job getting over there, barehanding that ball, getting it in because Ellsbury could fly. Yeah, there was a split second there that I thought they might try and score him here. But Romine got to it quickly. Now the intentional walk, so they will put Gardner on here and go after the rookie. I agree with the move and with all the heroics you brought it up that Gardner has had in the last week. He's homered to win a game. He's doubled to win a game. He's been getting it done for them. Yeah, this would seemingly be a much better matchup. The rookie Frazier, who is 0 for 4 tonight, talented hitter, but Gardner will be given the free pass. But now the key is does Gardner steal right. second base to get himself into scoring position? And if you're green, how much attention do you pay to him?
Frazier looks at a strike. Good bender there. Brad went out to the mound. So he must have had much more of a conversation with Shane Green and not just simply saying walk guard. There must have been some instructions as well at how to attack this youngster, Clint Frazier. Now the 0 1. Runner goes. A strike called, no throw down to second, but the count is 0 2 on Frazier. Stolen base for Gardner. His second of the night. Now a base hit could win the game. Oh and two. Frazier has a walk off home run this year. That was against Milwaukee back in July. And he hits this one in the air. Shallow left field. Machado to make the play, and the Tigers hold on to win. 4 3, your final score tonight. Now we send you to the Call Sam Studios. Mickey York standing by with Tigers live postgame.